Much like a ranger or wilderness watch program, Indigenous guardians monitor, manage, and steward their homelands. Guardians essentially utilize a combination of skills learned in structured guardian training programs, as well as learned skills from within their communities to oversee activities on the land and the waterways. They are the eyes and the ears for the people and for the respective governments. First of all, we have to look at the history that we have, you know, we've been living in this territory for thousands of years and uh, our people have been able to manage the land, the water, the air and all the resources that are contained within it in, the, in our territory. And, uh, you know, we refer to ourselves as Stala, which is people of the river. Uh, we also refer to ourselves as Fulmuk, which is people of the land. So that's how we're connected to the land, the water. And that's why we've been, say, we've been given a responsibility to look after the land, the water, the air, and all the resources. And um, in the past, we had people who were sort of specialists in different areas who went out hunting and did all the things related to hunting, went out fishing, went out gathering plants. and and looking at animals, hunting animals, and making sure that the habitat was intact so that the species could continue to exist for present and for future. The way the native people did it was they have families, heads of families, uh, look after their own family in that respect. Like we didn't have offices like you guys have. Native families looked after everything. And uh, Native families had people that, you know, knew certain things, you know. Some were good in finances. Others were uh, good in uh, looking after the forest. Others were good at looking after the rivers and others were good at looking after the land. So they used those people, you know, at their family meetings. I mean, each family had one of those people, you know, in each department. So that was how our people monitored the programs you're talking about. Everything that our people did, their way of life was always set on our ancient beliefs by our people. The way they lived, the way they thought. It wasn't always political. The ancient beliefs of our people was that because they had been here for thousands of years, the outer layer of, of the earth was the remains of our ancestors. And anything that grew on the land grew on the remains of our elders, our ancestors, whether it's trees, grass, and anything that ate of this, whether it was animals, birds, and the fish ate a lot of whatever the water washed down. The fish became sacred like the animals and the birds that lived on the land. And they became our brothers because we, we ate the fish and the birds and the animals. And when we died, we went back to the earth and we grew more vegetation and trees and grass. And so nothing was ever lost and it continued on forever. And so the trees were very important to us because they were among the largest that grew. And we got our clothing, our houses, our canoes, everything from the trees, or the fruit, the, the, the medicines, our baskets, everything that we lived on and lived with came from the trees, especially the cedar was very sacred to our people. And so we had to have very strong guardianship over the elements 
to make sure there was always a balance. Roles and responsibilities for guardians vary, reflecting local culture, agreed-upon approaches, and activities that are common within the region. Dozens of guardian-type initiatives are underway. Nations across the landscape in Canada have developed programs to serve their unique needs and perspectives. <laughs> Ah, for sure. Watch this. Don't give it to anybody else.